So we developed this model using FIFA's historic database on approximately 9,500 different games uh, between countries. And we are also using the FIFA ranking in which by currently Brazil, Belgium, Argentina, and France currently hold the largest ranking of uh, FIFA. So our model, which uses uh, essentially Monte Carlo simulation on top of Excel using easy risk in this case in English, allows us to take this a database. And let's say, for example, here we take the game of uh, Poland against uh, Belgium, in which Poland came with 1,544 points and Belgium came in with 1,827 points. The ratio of one towards the other is essentially 0.85. In other words, 0.85 is 1544 uh, against 1827, leaving Poland on, on a weaker position uh, competing against Belgium. Taking into consideration this history of approximately 9,500 uh, different games from um, 2011 all the way up to 2022, we were able to create charts in which according to that factor, one team against the other, we were able to consider in this case more than 5,000 games in which there was a closer range between one team and the other one. And we were able to classify accordingly. So for example, the Poland-Belgium game in which there's a 0.85 ratio between Poland and Belgium, I would have to match historically that ratio, 0.85. And therefore, Poland would have a 26% probability of winning the game. There would be a 51% probability of losing the game, therefore Belgium winning, and there would be a 23% probability of a draw. I take these numbers and essentially we run Monte Carlo simulations for a whole tournament, the group phase, and then each one of the A finals, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finally the final, and generate random numbers using quantitative risk analysis with uh, Monte Carlo simulation. In this case, using, as you can see, easy risk, I was able, for example, to calculate many random samples in which using Monte Carlo distributions or distribution functions, in this case, Bernoulli's for uh, the points being won, and then also Poisson's for the uh, goals being um, turned in by each one of the teams, we would be able then to generate thousands and thousands of different scenarios and then collect that information after 50,000 scenarios being run. So at the end of the day, we get 50,000 scenarios being run over here on our Monte Carlo simulation. We get those results over here for each one of the teams, somehow gathering the information of which team is going to eventually win the cup, in this case, Netherlands, on the other one, Belgium, on the other one, Iran, Belgium again, England, and so on and so forth. We do this alternatively for 50,000 iteration runs and come up with these results. At the end of the day, four teams clearly stand up as, as much as six teams with approximately 8% probability of each one of them winning the World Cup. After that, after four solid first teams, Belgium, Argentina, the Netherlands, and Brazil, uh, England, France, and Spain came here on a second tier. And then after that, all the remaining teams of the World Cup. So as you can see, there's a tight uh, likelihood on top over there. There's at least five or seven strong teams, which approximately the same probability of winning the World Cup. Uh, football is full of uncertainty, so we're looking forward to see what's going to happen uh, when the World Cup starts in a couple of days. I hope you find this model useful. You can always uh, download it from our um, platform. In this case, uh, just go to easyrisk.com. That is our platform. Go to Quantum Hour, add in on top of an Excel, and you'd be able to download here for free, uh, essentially the, the free version of Easy Risk Quantum Free, 
with uh, the sector, in this case, the Qatar 2022 model. So you can run it yourself, uh, test it for yourself, and try to see if you can beat the odds and have your favorite uh, team win the championship. Thank you.